If you have a wireless network adapter that has a removable antenna, you can mount a variety of different types of specialized antennas to get increased range. Today, we'll explore the properties of several different types of antennas on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have a wireless network adapter that comes with a removable antenna, it turns out there's all sorts of interesting options you can mount aside from the default antenna that looks like a stick. Now, while omnidirectional antennas like this can be useful for getting a long, flat radiation path that goes basically in a donut around you, it's not so good for getting extreme range. So today, we're going to use Wireshark as a tool to measure signal strength and compare the way these various types of antennas perform when pointed at and away from a Wi-Fi source. Now, this is useful because it gives us the ability to assess how strong a signal is and also the performance of any one of these antennas. So for range, we're going to test first this omnidirectional antenna, a larger omnidirectional antenna, and then a directional antenna in the form of this panel. Now, this is a alpha wireless tube U, which is, I believe, meant for a boat but it mounts these relatively nice outdoor antennas that are really powerful. And we're even going to go up to a giant alpha wireless uh, panel antenna that lets us get Wi-Fi up to three miles away, provided there is a line of sight and there's no other inclements like weather that could be affecting the signal. Now, in order to follow along, you'll need a computer with Wireshark and a compatible wireless network adapter. And you should check to make sure that yours is compatible with Kali Linux, because if it isn't, you won't be able to put it into monitor mode. Now, we're also going to be looking at different types of antennas, so hopefully by watching this guide, you'll be able to look at the signal strength and the results of each of our tests and decide on which type of antenna is right for you. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description if you need to do any troubleshooting. Once you have a wireless network adapter and a computer ready to go with Wireshark installed, then we can begin. Now today we're going to take a look at some of the various effects you can have using different types of antennas with the same wireless network adapter. Now we're going to be using the Tube U, which was from Alpha Wireless. And what's cool about this is it's waterproof, it is designed for boats, so it's quite rugged, it's outdoor, and it can be mounted on a variety of different antennas. And we're going to try out the 9 dBi giant one, a smaller one uh, that's also omnidirectional, a panel antenna, and then finally a parabolic grid. Now, I'm also going to be introducing a method of using Wireshark to track signals. And this isn't necessarily well documented, and we will do another guide on exactly how to do this. But for today, we're going to be using it to track and monitor the, st the signal strength of the beacon spammer that we're monitoring. Now, our target today that we're going to be watching is the beacon spammer, which we've also done a video on. And it's basically creating a bunch of fake networks that we're going to zero in with, um, zero in on by creating a filter in Wireshark. So we're only getting those packets and we're not getting a bunch of wild results from other different devices. So let's get started first by typing ifconfig. <clears throat> and first things first, we should plug in our wireless network adapter. Here you can see mine is already plugged in and put into monitor mode as WLAN1MON. But the first thing you should do is type IPA. And that should give you a list of all the different wireless network adapters plugged in, whether or not they are started. Now, when I first plugged this in, I just saw that it was here. I didn't see it if I typed ifconfig. So the way to get it to appear there is type ifconfig. And if this was WLAN1, up. will bring up your wireless card and you'll be able to manipulate it further. Once it's up, you'll need to put it into monitor mode, which is airmon ng start WLAN1. Now, I've already put my card into monitor mode, but as soon as you put yours into monitor mode, you should be able to type ifconfig. And you should see your card as WLAN1MON, or if your internal card is supported, WLAN0MON, or something like that. If you're using Ubuntu, it'll probably be something much longer. Now, the next step is we need to start scanning on this card before we open up Wireshark. Because Wireshark can't actually control the card, it just listens to it. So to do that, we're going to use ng and pass in the WLAN1MON argument. Now, we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to cut this short, and instead, I'm just going to specify that my target is on channel 1, so tax C1, 
because otherwise, if we're scanning over every single network, we're really going to get a lot of garbage. Um, so now that we have our card scanning on channel one, let's go ahead and move into Wireshark. Now opening up Wireshark, we can select our interface here. And once it starts running, what we're gonna do is look for a beacon frame or some sort of packet that is from the device that we want to track. Now today we're using the beacon spammer and one thing that every beacon spammer packet has in common is that the first three octets of the MAC address are the same. So we're gonna use that to basically only hunt beacon uh, spammer packets by using the transmitter address here, right mouse click on it, apply as filter, and then click on select it. Now this means that any transmissions from this MAC address will automatically be added to our screen and anything that is not from that device will not be added. So this should cover basically all of the different packets that are being transmitted by the beacon spammer. So to make this more simple, I'll put in a bracket here and I'm gonna type oops, uh, zero colon three and then another bracket. And what that's saying is only pay attention to the first three octets of the MAC address. So when I press return, you can see now we've jumped up substantially in the number of packets we're seeing, and we're actually seeing all the packets from the beacon spammer, even ones with different SSIDs. Okay, so we are almost there. Now we need to copy this formula right here and go into statistics and IO graph. Next, we are going to go ahead and paste the display filter into one of our graphs. And we're going to select the Y axis AVG Y field. And the Y field is going to be, oops, it's WLAN underscore signal, oh, uh, sorry, WLAN underscore radio dot signal underscore DBM. Now what this is going to do is plot the signal strength of the wireless network adapter, or rather the packets received by the wireless ne network adapter. And this can be used to either determine whether or not we're getting a, a good signal, or even to hunt down the location of the network if we want to use the directional antenna. So let's start out with the smaller one. And we're gonna use an omnidirectional antenna that allows us to see in kind of a donut pattern. Now the radiation pattern here is important because as soon as we plug this in, we'll be able to see wireless networks that are in kind of the, the radiation um, cone or uh, disc that this creates. And if it's, if it's in the right part of that radiation pattern, we can get an incredibly strong signal even if we're using a slightly smaller dBi antenna. Now what I mean by that is that for this larger 9 dBi antenna, we might actually see that it has a poorer signal strength for this particular target because the target is relatively close, it's only a couple rooms away. If we were going after a larger, longer range target, then having a radiation pattern that looks like a big stretched out donut and would be able to basically go really, really far in every direction would be more advantageous because we would get a better range from further away. So one thing to keep in mind is that bigger is not always better when it comes to signal strength and omnidirectional antennas. Because they work as kind of a donut, depending on where you're stretching that donut out, it may or may not put the target in a good piece of the radiation pattern to be able to actually get good signal strength. Now here you can see as soon as we plug this in and orientated it correctly, our signal strength jumped up so we're only getting about 66% packet loss which is pretty good, or this is 66% of uh, signal strength, which is pretty good. And if I rotate this in the wrong direction, we can also observe some effects like a drop off in signal strength as the donut pattern is no longer putting the target in the right part to get good reception. So if I pop off this smaller antenna and put on a larger one, we'll see if we can get a stronger signal strength than we had before with this quite larger magic wand style boat antenna. Now I can see immediately that I actually, it looks like I do have a, a stronger signal strength with the larger 9 dBi antenna than I did with the shorter one. So I would say in this case, while the, the uh, increase isn't crazy dramatic, it looks like we're, we're now at about uh, like 60, 64% or so signal strength. It's still enough of an improvement that from, you know, maybe like 65 or 66, like it's, it's definitely better. So. This is not a way we could really track down a network, but it's definitely a way we could expand our ability to reach out to networks that might be up to a mile away. And again, if we're, we've are we got a bunch of buildings in between us and the target, it's not gonna work as well, especially trees, because trees have a lot of water and leaves soak up Wi-Fi signals a lot. So our next antenna is going to be a directional one. 
And this is a omnidirectional antenna that will basically allow us to point the front of it towards the target and receive a much stronger signal strength than is possible with an omnidirectional antenna. Now this is also the kind of antenna we can use to hunt down a signal. So I'm gonna start out by pointing it flat and getting a base reading of about, it looks like 74%, maybe 75% signal loss. I'm gonna bring it up and in the wrong direction and you'll see that the signal strength jumps up. So we're still doing not quite as good as the, oh, that's okay. So we're doing not quite as good as the omnidirectional antenna, but still substantially better than just pointing it straight down. So now I'm going to slowly start to rotate it. And what we should see on our graph is a spike when we have it pointed in the right direction. And here you can see we're getting a spike. And as we rotate, eventually we're gonna pass the source and the spike is gonna go down. And that will tell us where we need to point this back in order to get our optimal signal strength and basically the location of the device that we are trying to track. Now, as I keep going, we've already passed the threshold that we were able to get with the omnidirectional antenna. So this is already giving us much stronger signal strength than we did, than we were able to get when we were using a source that didn't take directionality into range, uh, into account. So as I continue to turn this, you can see, there we go, we start to get a dramatic drop off as soon as we pass where the source is actually located. So if I bring this back slightly, so that we get our spike again, you can see that we've gotten our highest recorded signal strength except for a little bit of a glitch when we were um, transitioning between antennas. We've gotten our highest consistently recorded signal strength by simply pointing this directional network adapter right at the source of the Wi-Fi network. Now our final network adapter or antenna that we're going to try out is the parabolic grid. And the parabolic grid is not subtle at all. If you think this is not subtle, then the parabolic grid will definitely get you some looks because people are used to you having your satellite dish pointed up, but they're not really used to having something that looks like a satellite dish pointed directly at their house. Now, after setting up the parabolic dish, I can see I'm already getting a much stronger signal strength than I was getting before. Compared to over here where we had the omnidirectional antenna, the stronger omnidirectional antenna, and then the directional antenna, the strongest signal strength we got was still not able to break around 60. But here you can see we've gotten all the way to, looks like around 55 or so, which is a much better signal strength because you have to remember that the scale is inverted. Now if I pan this around just a little bit, I should be able to take advantage of the extremely directional na uh, nature of the parabolic dish. I should see either a big spike or a big reduction in signal strength can, uh, depending on how I'm moving it. And this should allow me to very quickly identify where the source of a wireless network is. Here we can see I get a signal drop as I move it this way, and then when I move it back the other direction, the signal goes right back up until I go past the point where the network is actually located. Then I'll experience another drop, allowing me to quickly locate where that network actually is. Now here you can see we've finally gone over the peak, and right where this peak is formed right here should be the location of our network broadcasting device. This could be a cell phone, in this case, a beacon spammer, but in general, it's also how you can tune this dish to make sure that you're actually recording in the right direction and you don't have it just a little bit off because network uh, adapters like this that are plugged into a highly directional antenna have to be pointed directly at their target. After running a test with a bunch of different types of antennas, we can see that the signal strength is dramatically affected by which one we've mounted and the direction that we're pointing it. Now this is great news for a variety of different applications, such as mounting a panel adapter if we want to do something like maybe sweep the top floor of a building's antenna, because we know that an omnidirectional antenna probably will not do the trick. If subtlety isn't a concern, we also know that we can get extreme range from the very large parabolic grid antenna. Although, as you can see, it is quite large and unlikely to go unnoticed if you are going somewhere that it needs to be concealed. Now, I do recommend these uh, Alpha Wireless network adapters if you get a chance to check out the Tube uh, UN and Tube UNA. They are slightly different chipsets, but both of them are Kali Linux compatible, and while using them on this guide, they performed really well. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for any troubleshooting. If you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.